Happy Friday. We're back with another five weekly favorites. We have some good things this week, I think. First up is a blush favorite. I've been ordering a lot of blushes actually lately. I love blush. I know blush is kind of like a trend right now or has been, but we've loved it forever. Forever. Like CoverGirl Cheekers days, those were our jam. We just love good blush. Blushes. Yeah. And I've been trying to find more things from ColourPop that I like because I love the Super Shock shadows, but we've been over this gripe we have with them that now they all contain glitter. They have like none. I ordered one that I actually really like that was one of the two satin finish options and there's still glitter in it. So I'm like, I'm not understanding yeah, I don't get it where they're going with those. But I've always loved the Super Shock blushes as well. Like those are probably my top two products from ColourPop, the Super Shock shadows and the blushes. And there is this shade called Over Dramatic. That's one of my all-time favorite blushes. And I was going to repurchase it because you know the Super Shock formula can kind of dry out over time. But then I saw this blush and I was like, oh wow, this is really pretty. It's called, how do you say this? Voile? Maybe. Voile? It's V-O-I-L-E. It's a pearlized Super Shock cheek. Um, it's this really beautiful like deepened copper with a little bit of shimmer but not glitter just shimmer like on the cheeks it just kind of gives your cheeks like a pearlized look so you don't really need to use a highlighter and it's so beautiful and if you're familiar with this formula it's almost like a creamed powder i can use a synthetic blush brush no problem but you can also use your fingers you could even use a sponge i'm sure it's just a really nice like creamy formula that blends onto the skin so seamlessly. So this is a bit of a deeper shade. Um, I can swatch it for you. It's a little bit of a deeper shade, but I was able to like basically share this out no problem on my skin. And it just gives like the most beautiful pearlescent finish. I hope you, they can see this, right? I think so. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I saw this on Tantalia when I was looking at like the re reviews for this. And I was like, oh my gosh, like it looks so beautiful on her and I don't have anything in my collection like this. And although I do like warm toned blushes aren't usually my jam, I don't think they like suit our skin tone as yeah. well. Um, but I just saw Everything this. Everything looks warm on me. So it's really yeah. hard to find something that looks cool. Yeah, exactly. But I saw this and thought like, I just feel like I need this. And it's really pretty, especially like going into like the summer to fall time. I feel like I'll be wearing this a lot. Um, so I wanted to mention it because the super shock blushes are so affordable and this one comes in like this really really cute light pinky cream packaging. Yeah, it packaging. must have been a limited edition collection or something. It must have been. So if it's limited edition, well seemingly they're all limited edition because they just keep taking shades away that we love. So grab this one if you're interested. I also don't have any of the Bare Minerals bronzers, but I imagine that this one is similar to that like Kiss of Copper shade yeah, that everyone talks true. about. Maybe a little bit deeper, but a similar type of concept where like a shimmery blush that's almost like a bronzer tone. So I love this. Okay, next we have the most random favorite, but I'm really happy that we picked these yeah, up. Yeah, me too. Um, so we were at Walmart a few weeks ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. It was great. We haven't been in so long yeah. and like we mostly went for snacks that we couldn't find other places. But then they have a really small beauty department, but for some reason they had things there that like we can't find anywhere yeah. else. And they had Stridex pads for like two dollars. Mm -hmm. And they're the alcohol free Stridex salicylic acid. Alcohol free, I didn't know that. Yeah, salicylic acid two percent um, maximum soft textured pads. There's ninety pads in here and I swear they were like two dollars, right? They were really cheap. I don't know they were two dollars. Like I think it was maybe like seven dollars. Oh my gosh, no, they were cheaper than that. Okay, we'll link them below. They were really cheap. And I've wanted these for a long time just because salicylic acid really works to like clear like body acne. Mm -hmm. Um and I feel like the pad format is so easy to use. Yes. I can Which like pull I one out to show you. Cool. I wanna just ignore yeah, they the are. that we've realized. And there is fragrance in here too, I believe. Right? Yeah. It smells um, like it. But it doesn't oh. irritate my skin. Well, I don't use these on my face. No, I me, only me use either. them on the body. But so they look like this, and they have like a little area for your finger to go in, which is really easy. So what I love about these is like I've been using them on my chest when I've been breaking out lately, and like the bikini area mm -hmm. for um, ingrown hairs. Yeah, and it works so well for both. Yeah, and it's like it also works if you get like those. I don't know if it's milia. I don't, I think I actually have Melia, but if you ever get like bumps or like I get breakouts on my shoulders sometimes mm -hmm. and it works on like arms basically. Yeah, I've been getting breakouts on my shoulders too. Weird. That's so weird. Mm -hmm. I don't know. The weather's been weird here. Anyways, it works really well without being like 
sensitizing, which we have really sensitive yeah. skin. Which and it says non irritating formula, it but that's literally, actually shocking. Yeah, it, 2% salicylic. It literally says easy on skin, tough on acne. And I don't know what sort of formula they have going on here, but it's true. Like, it really is super gentle when other 2% salicylic acid products I've used have been really like, whoa, like, oh my god. Yeah. So, Roberta says she wouldn't put this on her face. I wouldn't either, but I might. Like if I ever like if I really needed to, yeah, if I ever woke up with like a lot of breakouts, I actually feel like these would work without drying out the skin. Um, so I'm really really impressed, and I swear they were like under three dollars. Yeah, really affordable. So I will continue to buy these. We'll go to Walmart just to get these. They're really good. It's really hard to find. They used to be like on Target and stuff, and now they're not. Yeah. Um, but if you can find them, I feel like you will find use for them. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up. Are some dried florals. Uh, we went to Ikea for some storage, more storage. We always get our bins there because we talked about them before. What, I forget what the name of them is because the name is so obscure. You but know those, those like bins. white stacking <laughs> bins that we love, we talked about before. We needed more for our cabinets for more things we're working on and they didn't have any. They were completely sold out so everyone else likes these bins too. But I found these cute dried florals. It came in a whole bushel of florals for $10 which is a really good deal. These are like, what are they called? Palm leaves. Palm I think. leaves. Mm -hmm. I actually really liked like the green cream color. I felt like it was a really unique option. And I'll take a picture of what I did in one of the IKEA vases with a few of them. I didn't use all of them. Like some of the ones in the front, like the hard acorn looking brown ones, I didn't use. But I thought that these were really cute. And for $10, that was a really good deal. Because if you order from like a floral or even like your local flower shop, which obviously we should support small businesses. Yeah, I, can, I but got some. If you're local here, um, the Secret Garden Flower Shop is really close to our house. Yeah. And I purchased some like this from there and they were really expensive. But yeah. of course, it's nice to support local It is shops. good. But I saw these and it was like $10 for this whole bushel and these are super cute. I've just been kind of like putting them around the house. So I really like them. I think they're really cute. Trendy as always, you mm -hmm. know, so. Okay, um, I did a whole video on this, which should be going up next week yeah when you watch this so i won't go on too long but i've been loving the native unscented sunscreen with zinc oxide spf 30 it's the face sunscreen they also have a body version this has 20 percent zinc oxide but like virtually no white cast and it's more of like a matte finish it's really incredible watch the whole review to like see me apply it but i've been loving it this week and i will tell you it'll be in our monthly favorites as well Okay, and last but not least is a podcast favorite. So you guys know we love podcasts. We listen to them all the time. Office Ladies and How We Built This are like our favorite yeah. ones. Um, but we do like true crime. I've talked about this before. I'm trying to like cut myself off of it though in books and podcasts because it can be a little bit too much and it's not really the type of thing. Like I don't go searching for true crime podcasts essentially, but we listened to To Live and Die in LA season one, maybe like last in 2020. Like I think it was 2019, and it was like our favorite true crime, true crime podcast yeah. because the host did such an incredible job. Yeah, Neil Stepp. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. he is a Rolling Stones reporter. He's like a pretty world-renowned journalist. He's written a bunch of novels as well. But anywho, that that type of book story, it wasn't about like a serial killer, so mm -hmm. I can handle that more. It's still really sad and like a little bit hard to listen to, but it's a little bit more. It's just less intense, I guess I should say, than a lot of like true crime out there. So when they released To Live and Die in LA season two, I was like, I know I have to listen to this. And this one is even more interesting to me mm -hmm. because Neil himself was like pulled into this case. And I think it even predated. Oh, yeah, it did season one. Shibani. Yeah, the case that he covered in season one was like two years after this even happened. Yes. And this sort of intros how he even met Jaden, the private detective. Yes. Because they never really covered that. He, he just, just said, said like, he, he has knew a friend him. that's a private detective. Which yeah, isn't it normal. Was, yeah, it was so. really weird. So this yeah. answered a lot of questions. I feel like I had from season one. It did. And just to like, I don't. I'm not gonna spoil anything. But this case is basically about this missing girl. Um, she went missing in Malibu, which who goes missing in Malibu? Her name's Elaine Park, and she was a 20-year-old girl. Um, she didn't live in Malibu. She lived um, more so, I think, they said Glendale, but then it was like a different city that they kept yeah, mentioning. really weird. So I think even like more inland than Glendale, so in like the deep valley of Los Angeles. Um, and it basically goes on to say like how she was seen leaving an ex-boyfriend's house, caught on camera leaving his house, but then her car was found on the side of the road and like they still, I mean we're on episode seven and they haven't found her body yet and I don't believe in real life they found her body No, yet and they, I don't think they even have like an answer to what happened in real no, life. No, no. So 
it's crazy but neil basically got pulled into this because he lives in malibu and his wife like was basically like why is no one searching for this girl like i feel like the news isn't reporting anything they haven't been trying to find what happened to her and um his wife like would hike the malibu canyons all the time and she just basically like wanted to help and then um their neighbors who his name's mike and he's the guitarist for incubus the band and his wife is like some famous violinist, violinist yeah and then so they basically decide to help so it's just really weird how like there's these four pretty famous people mm -hmm. like trying to find this missing girl that went missing in their neighborhood and so even that in itself is like very very interesting because you don't really hear about like celebrities being like pis every single day or like um, really dedicating time to like help someone yeah it, yeah it's a interesting story for it's sure. really interesting and then um they basically they they basically make a few breaks in the case and it's, it takes a turn, you guys. It is not what I expected it to go. We're only on episode seven. I think that there's probably 10 episodes. Maybe. I think season one had about 10. So I don't know if this is going to be, you know, same thing with season one. At the end of every episode, they say this is like an ongoing investigation. If you have any like thing that could be helpful, please call this hotline, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because this case hasn't been solved, which is also an mm -hmm. interesting take. Usually podcasts are about like cases that have been solved. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. It's really good. Highly recommend if you're into like suspenseful. Suspenseful, true crime. but also like I love that it's both season one and season two are through the lens of a journalist who has no background in solving crime. Yeah. So like you're kind of experiencing all these things like us as like normal people. Where he's a journalist, so he's really like intuitive and um questions everything but yeah. like in season one they really focus on like the google data which i didn't know anything about no that was really until listening yeah. and so like all these things and all these tools that investigators and like police use to solve crimes um that you wouldn't know as a normal person and i feel like neil sort of like you see it through the lens of him so yeah that's really interesting in and of itself yeah Thank you guys so much for watching our five weekly favorites. We hope you have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you on Monday.